Well, good morning. I'm Carl Crumley. I'm one of the owners of Image City Photography Gallery here in Rochester, New York. And I stopped by the gallery today to take a look at our show while, uh, while the gallery is closed. No one's in the gallery with me here. And uh, I took a look around and I, I was really excited to see all the different types of media that photographers have used in this show for displaying their images. Uh, from traditional prints like you see over my shoulder, these are my uh, images you see behind me here. Uh, more of a traditional matting and framing type arrangement to uh, canvas, uh, to metal, to aluminum. Uh, uh, to, to acrylic, uh, all, all types of uh, variations. And I'm gonna take you around the gallery and show you some of the options you have in presenting images in a gallery environment. You may also notice that the images are uh, presented in a different way than you would normally expect when you walk in a gallery. You would normally expect to see one image uh, beside another, beside another in, in a row. And that is the more uh, traditional way of presenting images in a gallery. But for this show, uh, our holiday show in 2015, uh, we used more of a freestyle method we call uh, salon style, where we stack images two and three and four high in some cases, and kind of a random arrangement in some cases too. So it's really kind of fun. We have a good time with this show. So let me uh, walk around the gallery and show you some of the different options you have for how you can present your photo your photographs in a, uh, in a gallery. Let's take a walk around, follow me. Let's start here in what we call the East Gallery, where our two artists in residence, David Perlman and Jim Patton, are displaying their work. These images of Jim's are traditional prints that are matted and framed and displayed single file as you'd expect in a gallery. You'll also notice quite a bit of reflection off of the glass, and that's typical of the standard glass nearly everyone uses. It's pure and clear, but does cause some reflections. There's some good options to eliminate those reflections, and let me show you a really good example out on the gallery floor. Take a look at some of these images by our friend Scott Medijasek. Scott does some really amazing 3D work, and I'll show you a close-up of one of them in a minute. But first, take a look at the glass he uses on his images. He uses a very high-quality museum non-glare glass that is virtually invisible with practically no reflections at all. You feel like you can reach out and touch his images, but as you can see, there really is a piece of glass there protecting this image. What's also special about Scott's images is they're not traditional photographs, but rather 3D creations. Scott once told me that his process is to take multiple copies of his photographs and cut them into pieces that he stacks and glues into three-dimensional arrangements using spacers. Let me show you a close-up of the one on the left, a, a photograph of cabinet doors. This is really an interesting image, and you feel like you can reach in there and grab the handles on the doors and open them up. Here's a close-up of that image of the doors with a beautiful texture of the decayed paint. Perhaps you can see in this video that Scott has layered pieces in a way to create a three-dimensional image. With the uh, essentially clear museum glass, it looks like I can reach right in there and grab a handle. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? While we're here at Scott's display, let's look at another excellent example of new or non-traditional media for photographs. This beautiful composite photograph is printed on an aluminum base that results in a really high gloss appearance that, that complements this graceful and colorful photograph. I don't fully understand how a photograph is attached to an aluminum base, but I understand there's a reflective base adhesive that allows the shiny aluminum to produce a somewhat backlit appearance to the print mounted on it. I'm going to lift this image off the panel, and before I do, I want to assure you that I've washed my hands thoroughly in this print, and the others that I'll handle today are all coated with protective sealers that prevent the oils of my skin from damaging them. I'll lift this off the panel and let you see what the aluminum base looks like. As I spin this around to the back side, you can see the aluminum base and the wooden framework attached to it that allows the piece to be hung on a wall, or a panel in this case. Look how stunning this photograph is on the aluminum base. It's beautiful and lightweight and durable. It's, a, it's really a unique way of presenting photography. We're not finished with Scott's display yet because he has another type of media he's used for his photography, and that's canvas. It's a printable canvas with the look and feel of a painter's canvas and can be run through a standard inkjet printer to produce an image. The canvas is then stretched over a wooden frame, much like a painter would do with his or her finished art. In modern photography terms, this is referred to as a canvas gallery wrap, since the canvas wraps around the sides of the wooden stretcher frame. As with the aluminum print I just showed you, this canvas print is also sealed with a protective coating, so I can touch it without damaging it, and I can feel the texture of the canvas. Often canvas gallery wraps are hung on walls with no frame at all, but in this case Scott has chosen a black matte finish uh, shadow frame that really complements the piece. I have an example of an unframed canvas gallery wrap that I can show you. Now this is a canvas gallery wrap from the great Dan Newberger, and Dan has chosen to present this piece without a frame so I can take it off the wall and let you see the back of the piece and the wooden stretcher frame. 
and there you can see the back of the canvas that has no ink on it. Dan has chosen not to allow the image to wrap around the edges of the frame, but instead to use a black edge that helps the image stand out from the wall. This is a traditional way of presenting a printed photograph. This is one of my photographs attached to a mat board and covered with a mat. But instead of doing this, another method of displaying a photograph is to apply glue to the back of the photograph. Then attach it to a piece of foam board, sometimes called gator board. And that's exactly what this is here. Let me show you this image that's attached to gator board and makes for a very lightweight presentation. The risk, you might imagine, if it's not in a, a frame, is that the corners of the foam board can very easily be damaged when it comes in contact with a wall or a table. It's probably better to have something like this in a frame, but it is lightweight and it's firm and solid. Well, speaking of solid, look at this. Now that's solid. <laughs> this is a photograph that is heat pressed onto ceramic tile. That's actually a piece of ceramic tile that the photograph is heat pressed onto with a somewhat magic process by our friend Phil of Ludet Tile Studio in Newfield, New York, which is a small town near Ithaca. Phil makes these for us uh, with his really interesting process and we end up with a tile that has a cork backing with a mounting system to the tile so it can be hung on a wall or it can be set on a holder and placed on a shelf or table. This is a really cool idea and we really like these tiles and sell quite a few of them. Here are some of the photo tiles on a rotating display rack on the gallery floor. And here are some more photo tiles on the front window of the gallery. Here's another way to present a photograph with a high gloss treatment. This is a beautiful black and white photograph by noted Rochester photographer Sheridan Vincent. This photograph is printed on a glossy photo paper that's glued to a white substrate and is sandwiched behind a piece of thick but very clear acrylic. This is another of Sheridan's acrylic mounted images and on the back side you can see the white substrate and the mounting apparatus that's attached to it. By looking at it edge on, you can see the sandwich arrangement that makes this yet uh, another unique and non-traditional way of presenting photography. Here's the front of the smaller image, and it's a view of a beautiful bridge over the Genesee River in downtown Rochester. It's really stunning, isn't it? We're a long way from being done, and I now get to show you one of the latest types of media being used to show photography, and that's a paper called Tyvek, T-Y-V-E-K. Tyvek is a product of the DuPont Corporation, and has many uses from protective clothing, to building wraps. In fact, I'll bet you've seen the name Tyvek on home or commercial buildings when driving around your town. It's commonly used as a moisture barrier in new construction because of its unique ability to have moisture pass one way out of a structure but not the other way into the building. Well, Tyvek also makes an outstanding paper for printing photographs as it has a texture similar to the canvas paper we saw earlier, but a bit smoother and with more of a feel of leather. In this amazing image by photographer Don Mingus, the lobby area of the Sherwood Inn located in Skinny Atlas, New York, really stands out. Don brought in a small sample of a photograph printed on Tyvek, and when I hold it up to the light, you can see the model appearance of the fibers in the paper. It almost looks like a watermark. Because of this, Tyvek prints are mounted on a white substrate to uh, present a uniform appearance to the finished image. Well, it's not all printed images. Sometimes it's video. This is my video display that I've matted and framed to look similar to standard gallery type images. In this case, I'm showing time-lapse video that I shot on a trip to Virginia, North Carolina. Video is usually a stranger to galleries and of course is more commonly viewed at home on computers and televisions, so I had to find a way to present video that it blends in with the still images I show alongside it. This high definition video display terminal is driven by a computer on the other side of the wall, but it could be constructed with using an all-in-one computer which wouldn't require anything more than a power cord to make it work. In this case, you can see the wires exiting the back of the display and going through the wall here where I have a computer displaying the video in a continuous loop. I like that someone left a coffee cup near the computer has the word joy on it. That's, that's really appropriate for this time of year. <laughs> this is another photo presentation by the great Dan Newberger. You're probably familiar with the little plastic cards with the ridges on them that you pick up at gift shops and resort areas. Those little cards show one image to you when you look at them from one direction, but if you tilt the card left or right, it'll show you a different image. This is called lenticular printing, and it's usually a novelty. 
Dan, however, has really carried that concept to new heights when he made this large piece you see on the wall here. Looking at it from this angle, we see one image, but as I move my camera across the piece to the left and then look back at it, we see a different image. That's very cleverly done, I'd say. Another way to display photographs is to use plaque mounting, or Plaquet, P-L-A-K-I-T is the trade name for this type of photographic mounting that's used by a company in Canada that's well known for it, but there are other companies in the United States and around the world that produce plaque mounts. The photograph is printed on paper and then glued to a strong backing, usually made of pressed wood or a composite material called masonite. This makes for a more substantial mounting system than gluing photographs to foam board or gator board as it's known, and it virtually eliminates the possibility of corner damage due to the sturdiness uh, this hard substrate provides. And what are other ways uh, to sell photographs in a gallery? Well, here's a book I've produced called Upstate New York that presents my images in a panoramic format inside. And I see over here that my friend Dick Bennett is selling note cards with his images on them. Here's a sample. And of course we sometimes sell loose uh, or matted prints like you see here. I hope you enjoyed this tour around our 2015 holiday show and learned something about the many, many ways that photographs can be printed and displayed these days. Well, we really live in an amazing time and, and you know, we should take advantage of the opportunities these methods provide us. Come see us at Image City Photography Gallery when you're in town.